Hi everyone, Bernard here. I hope you're all very well and welcome to the Citizen Channel. And it's a double, double trouble one today. We've got, uh, I thought I was just going to give you a match preview. and We've got a little uh, breaking news as I'm recording this. I've literally just looked on Twitter before I came on camera and realised uh, a certain gentleman's uh, re-signed for a couple of years. Yeah, so this is a... A special on Tottenham Hotspur versus Manchester City on the 21st of November 2020. A preview of the game, 5.30pm on Sky Sports. Plus, of course, we've got, uh, obviously, a little bit on Mr Pep re-signing a contract till 2023. So we'll talk about that as well briefly and what's been said by Mr Caldoon and what's been said by Mr Guardiola. So welcome to the channel. Plus all our usual features today, of course. Uh, the history boys, some history now to clubs, Tottenham and City. Odds on the game with my free just for fun bets, our regular City magazine feature, what's happening around City media, watch, etc. Of course, you are the ref. We're going to do our you are the ref. Nice, easy one today. Not too hard today, I thought. I thought I'd give you a rest on the difficult ones after all these city quizzes I've been throwing out there to, to make you, to make your life a misery. So yeah, we'll, we'll add that as well, of course. Please, if you're new to this channel, push that subscribe button. We're trying to get, 500 subscribers, which isn't much, is it, compared to the other guys out there? I think I do an okay job here with the information and obviously I'm trying to entertain as well. So please, if you can push that subscribe button if you've not already done so and tell your friends, City fans, City fan friends about it, that'd be absolutely fantastic. I'm aiming for 500 by Christmas 2020. I'm just about 30 odd ish, 40 short at the moment. So I'm getting there. So if you can help me out, that'd be fantastic. And if you check my playlist, You'll notice that uh, I do things on films and TV as well. I do little reviews and little quizzes on there as well. If you fancy a movie quiz opposed to a city quiz. So uh, if you know anyone or you interested yourself, please point them in my direction. That'd be absolutely fantastic. And please, all comments are welcome, especially today with the news of Pep and any comments on this upcoming Spurs game in a couple of days as I'm recording this. That'd be fantastic. And if you if you can't comment, it's lovely to get views. I get a lot of views for these previews, but uh, thumbs ups are nice as well. Just to know you're out there, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Right, here we go. What have we got here? So, Pep. Yeah, let's have a quick talk about Pep before we go into our match preview. Yeah, so we signed uh, a 1 plus 1 uh, looking at it. I've not read into the great detail. As I said, literally, I was... Uh, I was sort of uh, only found out as I was ready, readying myself to come on camera, to be honest with you. So I've had a quick scan round to see what I could see. So that's what it looks like, summer of 2023. You know me, I've had my pep last season watch. I've had to re-edit my thing. But uh, I was always hopeful he would sign again. I just didn't see any body language and, and nothing to tell me he would. So th this is really good news. At least he gives us a couple of years where he can still plan things. I'm not too sure about this, the, the messes and the Ramoses and all this lot coming. Obviously, it, it will mean a, a little bit less for our younger players, won't it? Still, he's not. He's not been great at bringing the young players through, has he? And I did. I did worry post Pep what what effect it would have on us as well. If um, you know, we've had the recent thing with Delap, hasn't we? He's not. He's not even. I've not even tried Delap when we've been desperate for a forward the last couple of games we've played before the lockdown. So it is a worry, but he's here for another two years. So perhaps this Messi and Ramos thing and all this sort of thing will. Will pan out in the end, and who knows, he might stay a bit longer. Hey, let's not let's not be greedy, no way. Yeah, Caldoun said in, in his statement, uh, just reading what's been said out on the on the city side. Uh, it's a testament to the quality of the man that Pep Guardiola's passionate, intelligent approach are now woven into the very fabric of the football we play and culture as a club. The impact has been central to our success during this tenure, and is why I'm delighted that he shares our view that there's so much more to be achieved both on and off the field. Pep's contract extension is a natural next step in a journey which has evolved over many years. It's a product of the mutual trust and respect that exists between him and the entire club. It also goes to stability and creativity at the heart of our football operations. Importantly, it's a validation of the football structure and philosophy that has been built over more than a decade and to which he has contributed so much. I'm sure all City fans share my delight in this new agreement and in anticipating the exciting opportunities that with continued hard work are there to be taken. Yep, and Pep said uh, briefly... I'm sure we'll hear more on this. Ever since I arrived at City, I've been made to feel so welcome in the club, in the city itself, from the players, the staff, the supporters, the people of Manchester and the chairman and owner. Since then, we've achieved a great deal together, scored goals, won games and trophies, and we're all very proud of that success. Having that kind of support is the best thing any manager can have. 
I have everything I could possibly want to do my job and I am humbled by the confidence the owner, Chairman Farron and Cheeky have shown in me to continue for two more years after this season. The challenge for us is to continue improving and involving and I am very excited and about helping Manchester City just do that. So there you go. There you go. So Pep staying. Well, I'm sure we'll have more of that over the next few weeks, but that's some great news, isn't it? Right. Well done, Pep. Anyway, so I've altered my thing. I did it for a bit of fun on the, on Twitch. I've just posted it out there and put some crosses through uh, in his last season. But I'll I'll redo that. I'll have to after have my Pep watch. I'll have to have uh, I'll redo the title for the uh, for the uh, next one we do, which will be the review of this game, won't it? City versus Tottenham. Let's, let's hope it's not. Let's hope it's a good one, eh? Right. Yep. Yeah, you are the ref. Here we go. Here's the question. Uh, there is three answers on here, but there's only two that are, actually make sense. So I've only get, you've got a 50-50 chance with this one. At half-time in a ferocious local derby, the away manager, this is, of course, Mr Trevelyan and Mr Hackett's game that, uh, you know, is, is out there. So my, my, my thanks to them, anyway, for giving me the idea to do this. Uh, at half-time in a ferocious local derby, the away manager decides his team needs dramatic change. He informs you he wants his team to ditch their away kit and revert to their traditional colours for the second half. There will be no clash of colours. Do you allow the change? Mm, yeah, yes, allow the change. Or B, do not allow the change. So, I mean, I think that's a fairly simple one, that, isn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't, let, I wouldn't allow them to change. Uh, right, yeah, anyway, <laughs> I'll give you the answer to that in a bit. Right, there we go. Uh, here we go. Four months now, isn't it, without an international break, I believe. There's no no more international games to sort of break things. I mean, so there'll be plenty of these City Present vlogs coming out. Anyway, so there you go. There'll be plenty of those to watch. Right, the history, boys. The hist little bit of history, City and Tottenham. A couple of older programmes there. Fantastic. That's one of my favourites. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute with the trophy and that's obviously from last season i've got this season's ordered so hopefully i'll have that and i'll do a review on the on the program as and when i get it uh yeah the league record at spurs we're not doing that great i think we've done better recently but uh we played 71 at spurs's ground depending where it is We've only won 19, we've drawn 17 and lost 35. So we have, uh, just, uh, we're just slightly in the plus, pluses on the, wusses, on the wins and draws, aren't we, over the losses. But uh, we've only scored 89 goals and we let 120 in. So not great. Again, we've picked up a bit of that over the last few seasons as well, haven't we, on the goal difference. Um, the last time we drew with Spurs um, at, uh, away from home was 2010-11, so almost 10 years ago. So that's a lot of people have... Planning a draw tomorrow. Then what? Uh, the bookies are, th are fancying a one-one draw tomorrow. So let's, we'll have a look at that later. Anyway, yeah, the biggest wins come fairly recently. The biggest wins are, we've had two five ones. Obviously, on the twenty-eighth of August, twenty eleven, we had the wonderful five-one. And uh, on the 2011-2012 season, uh, four from Dzeko, of course. How can we ever forget that? And uh, a Sterling goal as well. Um, and obviously that was just three games into the season, if you remember rightly. We were just second to United. We both, both got off to a good start, didn't we, on, on goal difference that season. So, yeah, that was a fantastic game. And I didn't go to that game. But I do remember watching it in a pub in Altrincham in, uh, in the sun. I think it was nice and sunny as well. I just, I just uh, really enjoyed that game. And of course, we beat them 5-1 again on in January 2014. A bit colder that day, I must admit, 29th of January 2014. And half the that song who put the ball in the Cockney's net, half the team did. Well, it sort of made was right for this one. Anyway, it's 5-1. It was Aguero, Torre, Dzeko, Jovetic and company all scored. Uh, and obviously that took us, oh, we remained top one point from Arsenal at that stage in that season. So, again, another good season. So, perhaps that's uh, if we can win 5 1 this one, it'll be a good, a good omen, won't it? And strangely enough, our biggest defeats against Tottenham away, we've had again twice uh, a 5 1 as well. So, it's a popular score, isn't it? Um, we lost 5 1 in 1933 34 uh, on the 14th of April, where Tolsland uh, scored, is an image of Tolsland there, scored our goal. Uh, we actually finished fifth in Division 1 that season, 33-34, and we won the FA Cup that season, so that wasn't too bad, was it? Spurs actually finished third, so make a note of that, because the other defeat we suffered was on the 8th of February 1958, so... Just about 15, 16 months before I was born. Um, yeah, we lost 5-1 again. And Joe Hayes, who's I've done a recent uh, a recent special on a moment, a player in time special, which will be out in January. Uh, Joe Hayes scored our only goal in that 5-1 defeat. And yet we um, uh, 
Spurs finished third again that season. So, and guess where we finished yet? We finished fifth again. So, <laughs> even though it was twenty odd years apart, we both finished in identical league positions. So that was that was quite interesting. So that was uh, we were actually that season the fifty seven fifty eight. We actually did beat them at home five one as well. So that they got revenge on obviously we'd beat them early in the season. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This this is a great image. This is an old game. This is from February twenty fifth nineteen sixty seven. It's this city with image. I'll put it on screen, and they've got the second division trophy in front of Joe Mercer there. So that's obviously at the start of the start of the revolution. Our first sort of. You know, when City City became you know almost conquerors in Europe, we did win, we did win a European Cup, not the big one, but uh, yeah, that's uh, so that was the start of it all. So that's a fantastic image on the front of the Spurs program there, and of course um, we drew that game. Uh, we <laughs> so we've got to draw that one. And David Connor, you remember David Connor scored the goal in that game on the twenty fifth of. February 67, obviously the year after. That was the first season back after promotion. Obviously the year after we went on a money, didn't we? But there you go. Uh, the last time at top, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, there's no sponsor yet. I don't know if that's deliberate or they can't find one. I'm not too sure. Yeah, the uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is a bit of a mouthful. Um, Edison, Walker, Otamendi, Fernandinho. This is the lineup. Zinchenko. Rodri, Gundogan, KDB, Mares, Aguero and Sterling. So an interesting team. Um, a very sat back, wasn't it, Mourinho, that game? Remember, it wasn't great, was it? It wasn't fantastic. I just had a look back at my review of the game. I did the vlog I did on it. I was, I was a little bit depressed, to say the least. So, uh, uh, yeah, on that one. I'll put a link on screen. Anyone wants to see how depressed I was after that game. Yeah, so it was a bit of a park in the bus, hoping to it as on the break. And it sort of worked, didn't it? Uh, Lloris had a good game. Uh, I'm not his great, biggest fan. I think he can make some right messes. But uh, he did have a good game. He can do some good stuff. Uh, some poor finishing by City. I think Aguero, Gundo and Mares all had good chances. I think Aguero had a, a great chance, but it was well saved, actually, if I remember rightly. Uh, I think Loris tipped it onto the post. A fantastic save. All credit to him. Uh, Gundo and missed the penalty, of course, even though Aguero was on the pitch. So there you go. Aguero was playing, but uh, Mr. Gundo and uh, trotted up and uh, failed to score so uh, yeah it was an angry angry affair at times as well Sterling was accused of diving Mourinho was flashing pretend red cars left right and centre like like he usually does the idiot uh, and even on the pitch they were, I think Loris was having a moan etc so it's a bit of a, t a bit of a a horrible affair I mean we went in at nil nil at half time then if you remember Mr Zinchenko went off for a second buckle, bookable offence when he said he shoulder charged the guy, but unfortunately, we could all see he just he just fouled him basically. He just shoulder charged him in the back. I don't know if I remember. I think it was Harry Winks, wasn't it? Who were, uh, you know, absolutely ridiculous by Zinchenko. He virtually lost the. So you could blame him for losing the game, to be honest with you. Um, so he was off. So with ten men, say so we still still probably had the most of the play, but obviously they hit us twice, didn't they? It was uh, one was a fantastic goal from long range, uh, and it was sort of once it went one nil, it was pretty much all over because we. Last well, at that stage, we weren't coming back. We were our, our form was a bit sporadic to say the least back in February before the lockdown. So. We weren't coming back from there, so it's a very disappointing two nil loss. Obviously, the last time we played Tottenham, um, I mean they had. Three shots, we had 19. They had three shots on target. They are 100%. They scored two of them. Uh, and we had six on target. But as I say, those were well saved anyway, the ones we had on target. 67% uh, percent, percent possession for City. And we were 87% pass accuracy compared to Tottenham 75%. And yet they still beat us. Obviously, having 10 men didn't help, did it? Yeah, so they, I mean, I will give you my score prediction later. The officials, the officials for tomorrow, we've got Mr. Mike Dean, he was there, he was the referee last last year who sent uh, Zinchenko off, so we've got him again. Uh, assistants Darren Can and Dan Robuffin. Fourth official is Andy Maidley. On VAR, we have Mr. Kevin Friend, they are Mr. Kevin Friend on VAR, so we're a bit of double trouble for us tomorrow, isn't it, Dean and Friend? Assistant VAR, Adrian Holmes. My suggested lineup, obviously, I'm not sure on the injuries, etc., with Aguero. Uh, I'm not sure of his fitness, etc. So I've, I've I've gone with this. I've gone with Edison, Walker, Diaz, Laporte, Cancelo. I think that more or less picks itself, doesn't it? Rodri, and I'm not I'm not put Gundogan in. I'm hoping he'll, he won't play Gundogan tomorrow. I want, I want a bit of a positivity tomorrow. I want Rodri, Foden, KDB, Torres, Jesus, 
And I've put Mares in there because I think if Mares doesn't play tomorrow, I think there are serious problems. So hopefully there's not serious problems. Uh, a bit of a, um, you know, a bit of a fallout. And I think Mares might be even, even if he's on the bench, he won't be too bad, will it? But uh, I do hope Bernardo plays instead of Mares. But the feeling that uh, after his uh, goal scoring antics for his home country, Mares, he'll, he might play him tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure, of course, of Sterling's fitness. So I've sort of left him out as well. So obviously he could be any of his fit enough. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him on the bench because he probably needed a rest anyway. Uh, and again, see see what happened with Gundo and uh, obviously the, the question mark has to be Mahrez, doesn't it? But I've gone for that. Edison Walker, Diaz Laporte, Cancelo, Rodri Fold and KDB Torres, Jesus and Mahrez. If I get eight or nine of those right, I'll be quite happy tomorrow. How are they doing? Well... Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, I mean, they sat second, aren't they? I mean, it's it's a funny, funny game, isn't it, early in the campaign? I mean, if they beat us, they'll be actually eight points clear of us. So it's, it's a bit like the Liverpool situation the last time we played. So, we'll, so even though we'll have a game in Andy, we'll actually be eight points uh, adrift. I'd rather be eight points behind Spurs and Liverpool, to be honest with you. I wouldn't want to be eight points behind either of them, but there you go. I mean, they do sit second in the table, only Leicester City. Um, and only Chelsea have scored more goals. But, but, but the thing is, I mean, they've played four home games. They've only won one. Uh, it's their away form. They won four away from home, uh, four out of four away. Uh, they've only won one game at home, drawn two and lost one. So, I mean, they're not fantastic at home, even though they're second in the league. They beat Brighton 2-1. They drew with West Ham 3-3 and looked a bit dodgy. They drew with Newcastle 1-1. Obviously, the Everton defeat was the first game of the season, I think, from at, uh, at home. But, uh, yeah, they're not great at home. They're not as good at home as they are away. I think, I think I don't, it's not certainly not the pressure of the crowd, is it? That's for sure. Perhaps it's the pressure of the open spaces. I'm not too sure. But uh, I believe they got one or two injuries. Uh, Doherty, is it? Matt Doherty's injured one and he's been relying. He's one of their... So uh, I think it's midfielder, is he, or defender? I mean, he, he's been playing really well. I think Bale might be playing. It'd be nice to see Gareth Bale. I've not seen him play for a long time. I, don't, I never used to watch much of Real Madrid anyway. So, yeah, they do have one or two injuries. Yeah, I mean, we've got to take advantage of my little thoughts on this game. We've got to take advantage of that home form, haven't we? We've got to take some solace from it. We've got to, I think we've got to be positive, uh, especially the, the players that should be up for it, shouldn't they? They're all coming back, having some great games of, in for their international teams in midweek. And we'll look at the who scored what and who assisted what in a bit on the um, on the media watch. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, our play should really be buzzing, to be honest with you. I do expect Mourinho to play similar to last season. Season where he will sort of part the bus again a little bit. I don't think he's going to come out and, and try and fight City, you know, all out attack against all out attack. Certainly not first half, anyway. So, yeah, and if we can take our chances, which we didn't do last season, a bit of a uh, a bit of poor finishing, a bit of good play by the Larice, the goalkeeper last season. But so uh, if we can take those chances, um, I think uh, I think we'll be all right. Uh, hmm. I mean, we'll see. I'll do say I'll give you my score prediction in a moment, but um, the, yeah, I think we should be okay. I, I think will it be high score? It could be, could be. But if Mister Mourinho does uh, part the bus as as he's likely to do, then perhaps not. We need an early goal to bring him out, and then it could be high score. And if that happens, so yeah, there you go. I'll uh, give you my score anyway. I'll just look through my the odds, the odds section now. The best, the odds, the gam. Please gamble responsibly, please. I don't ever condone gambling, and when the fun stops, stop. I mean, I, I've, as I said, I've, I always say, I am slightly ahead on the football this this year with these these bets, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've never really made money from football. I made money from horse racing many years ago, but football, I've just done it for a for a bit of fun, a bit of interest. So please, please gamble responsibly. Yeah, wipe out last time at all. I mean, here you go. Last time against Liverpool, which wasn't the easiest game to predict, was it? I did have KDB for any time goal scorer, so if we'd put that penalty away, it would have probably saved me. It would probably just, I'd almost broke even if he'd have put that penalty away, but hey, there you go. So a total wipe out last time. So we'll, we'll gloss over that. I mean, forget that. Right. Premier League interest before the match, George. Yeah, City is six to four, still best price to win the Premier League. Uh, spuds or Spurs? Uh, I, put, I put Spuds down here. I like, right, I like saying Spuds. Uh, Ten to one. So that's not a bad price, is it? Because they're in the second at the moment, and a lot of people are say, again hinting that this could be their season because it is a strange season so far, isn't it? But uh, we all know about Spurs and bottling it, don't we? But we'll see. Anyway, they're ten to one. If you fancy that, that's not a bad price. Right, the match odds. My first bet. City are four to five on. So I'm going to go for. 
for that. I mean, I went for evens against Liverpool, didn't I? But uh, four to five on, it's always worth it. We're usually long odds on, aren't we? So I'll go with four to five. I'll have five points on that. A draw is three to one, and Spurs to win is three to one. First goal scorer, you've got Aguero at 72. Will he play? I wouldn't have thought so. I would have thought they'd bring you back a bit more slower this time. Jesus, 92. Sterling and Kane are both 5 to 1. KDB, 13 to 2. Uh, Vinicius, is it? Is that how you pronounce it? He's 7 to 1. Mara, 7 to 1. Foden, 8 to 1. Son and Bale are 8 to 1. And Torres is 10 to 1. Well, I mean, hopefully Torres has got his shooting boots on, hasn't he? But I didn't go for any of those. And some, some reasonable value, but it, it's always quite hard with first goal score, isn't it? Both teams to score. Yeah, I mean, I, I think both teams will score. But it's 4 to 7 on. So a little bit restrictive, so I've not gone for that. And for both teams not to score, it's 5 to 4 against, which probably reflects the fact that uh, they do think City and Tottenham will score. The correct scores, this is where my second second bets are split on this one again. Uh, a one all is 15 to 2, a two all is 14 to 1, and a nil nil is 16 to 1. Yeah, the one all is the sort of lowest, that's what the bookies are thinking. They're thinking a one all, that's the lowest bet you can get, 15 to 2. Uh, City to win 2 1, I'm going to go for that one as my first bet. Just one point on that. City to win 2 2 1 is 17 to 2, so I'm just going to have one point on that. 1 0 and 2 0 is 10 to 1. 3-1 is 14 to 1, 3-0 is 16 to 1, and my other little bet is 3-2, so I'm going 2-1 to City or 3-2 for City, I mean, uh, I wouldn't be surprised, I mean, either of those, I'm going to have a point on 3-2, which is 20 to 1, so that's not too bad, 4-1 four to, four for City is 28 to 1, 4-0 is 35 to 1, if you fancy a 5-1, which has been quite popular, you can get 66 to 1 on City winning 5-1. Uh, Spud's victories, you can get 2-1 at 14-1, to 1-0 one, one at 16, 2-0 at 25, 3-1 and 3-2 at 33. And I'm not even going to tell, I'm not even bothered any more than that. I'm not going to, not going to beat us by more than that, even if they do beat us, are they? So we'll leave it at that, yeah. So that's uh, that's the next two bets there. 2-1 for City a point, 3-2 for City a point, 17-2 uh, and 20-1 to one respectively. Right, half time, full time. City, City is fifteen to eight. A draw and City is four to one. Spuds and Spuds is six to one. A draw and draw is six to one. A draw and Spuds is nine to one. City and a draw and and Spurs and a draw. I'll score on Spurs. Stop going. Stop being childish. Score on Spurs. That's fourteen to one. And my last bet is going to be the any time goal scorer. Yeah, I mean, you can have Aguero at ten to eleven. Will he play? Doubt it. Jesus six to five. He's pretty on fire. Sterling seven to four, Kane seventeen to ten, KDB fifteen to eight, but he let me down with the penalty last time. Vinicius thirteen to eight, Mares thirteen to eight, Foden nine to four, Son nine to four, Bale nine to four. But I'm gonna go for yeah. I mean, look, Torres three to one. Can't argue with that, can we? After his midweek exertions. So I'm going to have two points on Torres at 3-1 to one for any time goal scorer. That's hopefully a play. If, if Pep's positive, which I'm sure he will be now, he's re-signed his contract, I'm sure he'll be up for it tomorrow. I think uh, he'll play Torres tomorrow. Uh, and I've gone two points at three to one for him to be any time goal scorer. And just before we go on the on the betting side, under overs, over two and a half goals, which I think it will be, is, is not a bad bet. Actually, four to seven, a little bit. You know, I'm not going to do that, but it's, it's worth a look at that, isn't it? Over two, so as long as you score three goals, you get four to seven. If you score four goals, which again is very, very possible, you can get odds again six to four. So that look, that's not a bad little bet either. So there you go. That, I've had my free sort of just for fun bets on the screen. And before we go on to the regular City Magazine feature, some things that have happened over the media and on City sites, etc. And uh, as I say, the pet thing, we've done that one. I'm not going to go through that again. Yeah, I mean, the, the pay-per-view was dropped, wasn't it? That was good news. I, I, I just wonder if the people who actually paid to watch these pay-per-view games will get, will get any sort of refund. I mean, I, I don't think there was many. I think it's, you could probably count in the thousands rather than tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people who actually paid to view. Because there's some, you know, no disrespect to the teams that were on it, but they were some of the smaller games weren't they? weren't the big games. They get picked anyway. But uh, yeah, will, will they will they actually uh, refund that? Be interesting, won't it? But they, sh they should do. They got anything about them? But there you go. Uh, yeah, there was a great image on his own little Twitter thing of David Silver there with his with his son watching the Liverpool game. I thought that was a fantastic image watching it on. You think he'd be watching it 
streaming it to his big big screen wouldn't you somehow but obviously uh obviously he's like us watching it on a dodgy stream on a little laptop so there you go even even multi-millionaire david silver has to do that but that was a great image wasn't it of him saying come on and he's he type come on city as well that, that was nice to see we, i mean we love david don't we i think he scored recently didn't he? he scored his first goal as well last a couple of weeks ago fantastic yeah, another one going from something really good to something a bit iffy. Obviously, we had the Remembrance Day stuff, didn't we? And you had that put. Did you see that this image put out by Liverpool fans? I mean, it's a real insult, isn't it, to the to the people who've lost their lives and to the to the to the brave men and women who's still fighting in the forces and. Uh, you know, that's just, I mean, they always make things about themselves. I know it's one guy, I know it's one Liverpool fan, but it happens time and time again. I like it's absolutely pathetic. And I mean, uh, a few comments from various City fans, and not just City fans, other fans as well. That you know, I mean, I just uh, there's, there's no there's no logic is with things like that. You just can't understand why they come out with it. I'm sure, I'm sure City fans do silly things as well, but it seems to be a regular thing, doesn't it, with Liverpool fans? But that's such a shame to see that at goal. Yeah, they did their top five footballers in the world. At number five, they had Ronaldo, which is fair enough. Number four, Neymar. Has he done much to be considered one of the top five? I wouldn't have him in my top five. Uh, number three, Messi. Uh, number two, yep, our very own KDB. Absolutely fantastic. Well done, Kevin. And number one, I don't think there's any much argument. Robert Lewandowski. I don't. I don't think there's much argument with that. I think that's. Probably close. I think that's most people's top five. Perhaps not in the same order. We'd put KDB up there, wouldn't we? But uh, there you go. And then just on the subject of Remembrance Sunday as well, um, a great image appeared that uh, they did on Manchester Central Library. If you know, if you if you know Manchester at all, Central Library, a fantastic image there. The lead up to Remembrance Day that was absolutely fantastic and beautiful. That was a a lovely uh, a lovely thing to have up. And Noisy Neighbours who have a at Noisy Pod, they're in my links below in the description. But they're doing um a start they've gone onto YouTube as well now, so as well as well as listening to them, you can see their uh I was gonna say ugly faces then, but I'm sure they won't mind them their pretty faces, whatever you like to see. Anyway, I mean you can actually see the faces now where they talk. Uh, it's not I don't think it's anything different to the podcast, it's just another way of actually uh, listening in and watching the guys, obviously, as they talk about the games. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic uh, thing, the noisy pod. So the details are there anyway, and I've altered my links accordingly underneath so you can get to watch the YouTube channel as well. So that'll be absolutely fantastic. And at Stat City, yes, they've got something good, which is good for me, like my history thing. If I'm ever, I'm always checking various sources to find out information on old games, etc. But uh, they're now a comprehensive season guide from 1880 on City. I think they've got it on other clubs as well. It's not just City this is this is for. Um, but it is uh, fantastic. Loads of information on there. Just have a good good scout round it. Have a good look round it. So if you want to know a certain season, who, who, how many games you played, what we won, who played, etc., etc. Please check that out. That's at Stat City. There's other, obviously, other people do. I mean, City Till I Die is one I use all the time. CityTillIDie.com is excellent. I've Absolutely fantastic. Plus, uh, you get lots of images of games, etc., on there as well. So that's another I can recommend. That I, I think it's in the links below as well. I do I do thank them because I do use them from time to time. Yeah. So at City, that's a, that's a, at Stat City. That's a that's a great thing there. I always use Stat City for my quirky stats, as you know. Uh, at Man City, so on the Man City site, the inside story of the City's Youth Cup 1920 win. So that's uh, a new documentary coming soon on City Plus. So you have to be a subscriber. So that's a look at um, the 1920 FA Youth Cup triumph, the build up, I think, the last two games and how it built up a behind the scenes look. So that should be quite good if they hadn't stopped my plus uh, subscription. I'd probably watch that, but seeing as they've not took me money and I never stopped it, I have no idea why. And I can't, I honestly can't be bothered redoing it, to be honest with you. I can't be bothered going back on and redoing it again. So if they don't want my money, just tell me, City. You know, if you don't want it, just let me know. Right, at Opta Joe, as in the same as Stat City, obviously, they're the, gate of the guy. I go to for my quirky stats. They did notes on Mr. Phil Foden, obviously playing for England. Um, he was the youngest player in history of English football of the English football team to score more than once in a game at Wembley. So the youngest player ever. So fantastic. There's a another thing for a City player. Another another record we hold. And at City underscore extra. 
Man City on fire over the international break. Of course, we were Rodri scored a goal, Diaz scored two goals, Jesus got an assist, Foden scored two goals and got an assist, Mares scored two goals and got an assist, KDB scored one goal and got an assist, Torres scored three goals. There you go. So uh, we should pan Tottenham. We should Tottenham are in for it's another five one. I'm not gonna put the five for sixty six to one. I'm gonna put it on five one. Yeah, this is, should be should demolish them tomorrow, shouldn't we? Our guy, our, our guy should be really up for it. I mean, those goals will be flying in left, right, and centre. Oh, well, that's the media watch. You, know, you are the ref. Yeah, did you know the answer? It's quite an easy one, isn't it? Yeah, the answer. Yeah, of course you can allow the change. There is nothing in the laws of the game to stop this. There has been recent cases where the referee has actually asked a club to change its shirts in the second half because of a colour clash. I remember a, a certain team check, uh, changing the shirts at half time because they couldn't see each other. I remember it was too dark. Uh, some some team from across the road did that once. I don't don't think it helps. I think they still got stuffed. But uh, I do I do remember happening with their old was it the charcoal kit or something where a bit bit like this but a bit lighter obviously. That was quite funny, so yeah, it was quite an easy. I'll find an harder one for you, other ref, next time. That's far too easy for you. So, anyway, thanks for joining me today for this special, this little pet re sign special, and this special preview of the Spuds ver sorry, sorry, Spurs versus Manchester City game on Sunday, the 22nd of November. Please, and also, obviously, join this uh, international break, and obviously, with the start of lockdown, I've been posting a few more City Pass vlogs as well, quizzes, etc. So, please check those out on the playlist, uh, including uh, the Manchester City. History Part 9, I put that out, which covers 1959 to 64. As I look back at those years, uh, obviously, I look back at my new hot, horrible histories, Manchester City horrible histories uh, uh, thing, a feature that I do. It obviously looks back at the 13th of January 1991 when we went over to Goodison Park and we, uh, a certain manager, we had to face a certain manager who'd left us literally a couple of months before, Mr. Howard Kendall. So there's a special on that as well in the horrible history, plus, plus lots, lots more. There's loads of stuff on there as well please check the playlist uh, and quite a few more to come out over the next couple of weeks as well i've got i've got quite a lot of stuff i recorded at the start of the um at the start of the COVID, the first lockdown so i've got stuff that's that I recorded back in june july that uh, i'm going to put out as well so keep your eyes open for that and please of course i'll be back on sunday with a review of the tottenham this tottenham versus city game Fantastic. Please check my links on screen. If you follow or friend me on Facebook and Twitter, I do check every couple of days and follow and friend everyone back. And my little day job, I used to have a video shop, as you know, in, in Manchester in the 90s and 2000s. If you if you watch my vlogs regular and I do sell, sell old and rare DVDs, movie posters from the 90s and 2000s and board games as well. So you can check out moviegamenostalgic.com. That would be absolutely fantastic. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Uh, yeah, we're all happy today, aren't we? Let's see how we, that's how we feel Saturday night after... Uh, the trip to London, let's see how that goes, but uh, thanks for joining me for this uh, big match preview, and of course, Pep resi res resigns, resigns special, it looks the same, resigns, <laughs> Pep, Pep, oh, if I just saw that in writing, I would have, would have panicked, uh, <laughs> Pep resigns special, so please, whatever you do the rest of the day, have a great one, look at yourselves, look at your friends, look at your family, more importantly, Let's all look after each other until we meet again here on the Citizen Channel. Love you. Go over to my film and TV channel. This is Bernard saying, please stay safe, Blues. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.